So yeah, thanks. Thanks for hopping on Jackson. We got Jackson Stewart, uh, director and writer, and uh, we watched in our streams and screams movie watch party, uh, his movie Beyond the Gates. Uh, now I actually caught this movie. Uh, let me go ahead and pull, show you this. Uh, if you remember, you did back at the, the Alamo Draft House. You did <laughs> <laughs> this is back in 2017. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you you even I even snapped a quick photo of you oh, with your different haircut. Jeez. <laughs> oh, it's embarrassing. We have yeah. that little left hair. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was actually how I first heard about. Obviously, that's how I first heard about this movie because I used to go to Alamo all the time to kind of see all the new stuff they had. And they always did, uh, you know, kind of uh, more independent stuff and whatnot. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah. And actually, I even got I I even got there's one the poster I got which I still have. Wow, oh that's awesome, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, and I had actually asked you a question uh, during that where because uh, I saw that the title was Beyond the Gates, so then it got me thinking of uh, the Lucio Fulci. You know, the uh, I guess by I guess you call it biography in a way uh, that <laughs> old one that I think is out of print, and I was like, is it was it based on that? Oh, but when you actually, yeah, you know. Not totally. I mean, I think probably like subconsciously that was in there, but I mean the the obvious sort of ripoffs that we had were the Beyond, um, the Gates of Hell, and then the Gate, uh, the Stephen Dorff movie. Yeah. But um, yeah, his biography. Uh, yeah, yeah. That I'm sure that was kicking around in there somewhere. I think at one point we were calling it Beyond the Nightmare. Um, now was that for like the board that. game? Was that for the board yeah. game? <laughs> the nightmare yeah, pretty, board game, yeah. Pretty obvious sort of uh rip off there, but um yeah. Kind of a nod more like a nod yeah, to it. Though. I don't know if rip off yeah. is a great word to say. But... I don't know. I <laughs> mean it's you have a game called Nightmare and then you know you call our game Beyond the Nightmare. I think it's <laughs> I, I I think it's safe to dub it as a rip off, but um <laughs> Maybe less so now. Beyond the Gates doesn't really sound that this similar to that, but anyway, you you get the idea. Yeah, and you did have the gate at the end and everything, and where they went in the basement when they weren't supposed to, and initially, right? And then he has to stab the arm. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're you're actually from uh, you're from Arizona, right? Yeah, Tucson, Arizona. So now, okay, you're from Arizona. Did you go to film school, and, and you ended up in Los Angeles area, or because uh, Stuart Gordon was out of Chicago, right? Yeah, uh, you know, so I didn't I didn't go to film school. I mean, basically, um, you know, this giant sort of pile of Blu-rays and what have you. And um, uh, these guys over here, those were kind of like my film school was just trying to watch everything I could get my hands on and um, read everything I could and and really just sort of go into the you know, the, the movies that influenced the people that I loved growing up and try to just get as deep into that as possible. And so, you know, I went back and watched things from the silent era and I tried to watch everything from like um, specific directors or actors that I really admired. So I'd go and see like every Don Siegel movie ever, or like every Hitchcock film or every, you know, Argento or every, Peck and Paw or, you know, Scorsese or whoever. And, um, you know, it, it's like you, you do that enough and you, you kind of get like a, a good sort of uh, acumen of, of film pretty quickly. And, you know, I mean, you have to be reading and kind of doing things constantly, but um, yeah, I, I, I never really went to film school. I mean, I was like a horrible student in high school and um <laughs> basically just you know was like a, a serious troublemaker and then um i just kind of didn't even feel like i would get into any college you know and so i just didn't even <laughs> I, I didn't really bother but um yeah that's my long-winded answer for you <laughs> but, so how did, how did you end up uh working i guess as an assistant under Stuart gordon and uh how long did you do that for um, not, it, it wasn't a terribly long amount of time, honestly. It was like a, you know, a handful of months. I, I was, I was doing script coverage for him, but, um, 
It was a very weird how it happened. It was basically like my uh, a friend of mine worked with Jillian Gordon, who's Stuart's daughter and who's a good friend of mine now. But um, I posted something on Facebook about uh, reanimator screening at the New Beverly or, or mm. something like that. And then she was like, oh, that's so cool. Like my dad directed that movie. And I, I was like, I was like, oh my God, your dad's Stuart Gordon. I was like, that's, that's like crazy. the fucking like coolest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and um, and then I went to go, it, she invited me to like a, this screening he was doing of uh, Amadeus um, where he introduced it at the New Beverly. And I met him there and then I reached out to him, I think like a, a day or, or a couple days later. And I just asked like, hey, if you ever need, you know, an assistant or anything, let me know. Um, and, you know, he's like, sure, come to the office, we'll grab lunch. And then he, you know, asked me about some of my favorite movies. And we just kind of immediately like struck up a, a friendship. And then not that long after that, I went and started working uh, on Supernatural. But, you know, I, I mean, we maintained a lot of contact. And, um, you know, I, I talked to him, I think even like a month, before he died, like just a couple of weeks before he passed away. So, you know, I mean, he's always been like a pretty huge fixture in my life. And uh, similarly with like Brian Usna and Barbara and, you know, Jeff Combs and that whole gang from that movie. Yeah, I, I uh, saw a lot of them. Not, uh, I don't think Stuart Gordon, I think he ended up canceling at the time, but he, they came to, he came to the whole reanimator crew, like came to Texas Frightmare Weekend. I want to oh. say that was like 20, maybe th three, four years ago. And uh, really, yeah. So that's that's I, oh, that's where I, I I remember hearing about that because it was like it was like Jeff, Barbara, and and Bruce, right? Yeah, and 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 then I think he canceled. I don't. He hadn't passed away yet. Uh, I think he canceled, and then um, his. I want to say his wife. The. I'm trying to remember exactly. Yeah, it, essentially. Uh, yeah, talked to him there. Got a bunch of. Photos and that was that was really cool because uh, my actually first experience kind of with uh, Reanimator was in high school. Uh, I was 14 years old. Well, I take it back. It, it was actually at the Albertson Shopping Mall, the, the grocery store, where you would my mom would be checking out, you know, paying for groceries, and you see the video store box art right like right there at the corner because they're trying to upsell you on that right as you leave <laughs> right and so i remember seeing the 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 artwork for the head and you know the thing coming behind him and everything and you're like wow you know i'm only seven and this looks pretty amazing <laughs> and, uh, and so then then when i was in high school i came across a book and i actually told uh, bruce abbott about this and jeffrey combs but i came across like a movie it was like a imdb for you know just just in book form and this was you know so the mid late late 90s essentially and wow. um, uh, it gave Reanimator in there, and it gave it like half a star out of four, and and it, but it was like if uh, you know some some really hoity-toity person reviewed it because they were like, I did not appreciate the part with like the decapitated head making love. <laughs> and well, after, once you know what's what's crazy though is it's like I've got a Pauline Kale book right over on this shelf. She gave Reanimator a great review, and she's as hoity-toity as it gets. So mm. who, whoever that person is. They're entitled to their opinion, but they should be ashamed of themselves. So, uh. <laughs> well, it made me want to see it more. And so then, when I saw it, I was like, <laughs> when I saw it, and I, that was also in high school. But uh, I, I want to say the first time I saw it was actually the Elite DVD, the one. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, the, the one that's green I've got that right next to me. <laughs> I bought it off eBay, and I remember watching it. I was like, that was actually pretty amazing. I thought it was going to suck, but that the was actually lime really green good. One was that yeah. it? Oh yeah, yeah. it's a classic. Yeah, a lot of those elite ones, uh, just elite releases, kind of had a lot of interesting stuff on them uh, back when they were putting stuff out. But um, so uh, Barbara Crampton, so obviously through these, I guess through these connections, you met some of those people. But <laughs> when you were getting her for your movie, like how did you, I guess, convince her to do it? Um, I mean, I very easily <laughs> was basically like she, she, I'd been friends with her for like seven or eight years at that point. And oh, okay. Um, I met her. I met her at a, a performance of Reanimator the Musical, and I think we were like following. I'm I'm not on Twitter anymore, but at the time I was, and she'd she'd like followed me, and 
she was just very nice and very charming. And, you know, uh, I asked her to do this short that I produced and then she showed up and did that. And then, um, we got around to getting ready to like pull this movie together. And, um, initially I think this is public. I'm pretty sure this has come out in other interviews, but we had like, um, we actually shot with another actress playing her role. Um, mm. initially because I was kind of like wanting someone a little more like Barbara Steele to play that character. And, you know, Barbara Crampton, aside from the first name similarity, doesn't really have a lot of crossover there. Um, just they're, you know, totally different kinds of actors, but, um, basically like we shot this footage of like, just was not good. And, <laughs> um, you know, and we were like getting ready to, film the movie and it was like really important to me that we have someone that we could have the actors like act off of you know on the tv screen and not just have it be this kind of like oh just imagine there's something in there and you know we'll like put like a piece of green tape over it and uh <laughs> enjoy it and um and, and so you know we were like okay we've got to shoot this with her ahead of time and and i i was thinking about it and i was just like well she's kind of like the perfect sort of connection between this era of you know sort of like modern indie genre film and that the era i grew up watching and loving and you know and i basically just said you've got to do this like come down and and like we're going to be filming this and that's it. You know, like I didn't really give her a choice and then she just, you know, kind of complied and it was nice of her. So, uh. well, all her scenes, all her scenes are also kind of segment. like you, you probably just like film. I don't know how long it took you to film that, but uh, I mean, it's all just like, was all kind of cohesive and you just kind of did that and then it was ready for your film afterwards. Right. So, yeah, I mean, we did initially, we just did like one day with her that, you know, ended up, um, it feels like she's just in the entire movie though. Uh, like she's in it like very prominently, but, um, we ended up having to do a few pickups cause some of the clues mm. and stuff for the game were like just too obtuse and kind of like they, they didn't land. Like they were just like, they were like too confusing. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, we only did like a couple of days with her, and then she came and did some ADR. But it, I mean, she was actually mm -hmm. on set for a pretty good chunk of the movie because she, I mean, she was a producer on it, so she, you know, showed up and hung around and you know kept the actors entertained and that kind of thing. So, so I, I did have some uh, submitted questions regarding just kind of oh, kind God. of. There's, there's a lot of people. <laughs> there's a lot of people in our group that uh, do uh, are like in uh, into. And, they're they're essentially trying to get their own films made and whatnot so you oh, probably always end right. up with some of those but right before we get to that i was gonna i was gonna ask you about the uh the board game itself so like who actually created your board game and when you were even when you were writing the script like um i mean i guess you i know you were kind of basing it off of at least the thought of it like the nightmare board game and all the vcr game and all that but uh like when you're writing the script and all that like i'm I guess what kind of rules had you decided at the time or like, and then who, who you ended up having to s decide to build the game for you. And yeah, well, so, I mean, that was another just colossal nightmare getting that <laughs> thing done. Uh, basically like we, the idea for it that I always wanted was it, it should look like a spooky version of clue. And it was like, we kind of use similar like game mechanics to nightmare um while like having it be like an easily sort of readable thing for the audience you know like when you're just looking at the board because if you if you played nightmare and you look at the board it's like a you know i mean it's got kind of a cool color scheme but it's your, like you don't really know exactly where you're supposed to be on that specific game but just by taking right. a look at it but it's like clue you're like okay it's a house there's this room there's this room da, 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 and you kind of get the whole um sense of it so basically i had three different people that ended up working on actually i think it was four um people that did different takes of that the first one was just egregiously bad and it was basically <laughs> like the same piece of direction every single time which was do a spooky version of clue you know like make it like 
scary and you know these are the references and so on and so forth and it's like people just interpret it completely different you know and it's like there it's this is kind of a, a really good sort of um lesson for aspiring filmmakers is it's like what you say and what the other person will interpret it as can be completely different things and that goes for actors or producers or pretty much anyone you're working with and so we had one that was god awful that no one will ever see we had a second <laughs> one that i think my uh, a girl i was dating at the time did and she actually did like a phenomenal job but she kind of made it look too she was like a professional graphic designer but i mean it looked like a real like parker brothers board game and i was just like that's mm. like too it, like it just looked like something you'd get at target you know and i was like it can't it's got to be like a little weird and like edward gory kind of like creepy um and then and then that's what ended the relationship no <laughs> <you know>. no, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> no that no she was she do you was have not. the board game with you still like uh you, do you have uh, it like behind you somewhere I do. Uh, so it's interesting. It's actually being filmed uh, in something right now, which oh. um, uh, someone rented it, which is there's a sort of piece of connective tissue between Beyond the Gates and this this thing that um, should be pretty interesting. It's like a fairly prominent. Uh, I don't know what I can tell. I can say about this. I feel like I'm going to get in like a. Well, it does get it, it, it does get sold at the end, right? The end credits, the post. -credits. Yeah, it's 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 basically <laughs> like it's sort of a. Um, I I don't think I can say anything about this, <laughs> but that's like, all right. That's you'll all right. find out about it soon. It's uh, it's yeah. going to be in something that will definitely be in your your radar. So um, that'll be released wide to a pretty good chunk of people and that's you know uh that's well, all i can it, say <laughs> yeah if, let us know when it comes out and we'll we'll keep an eye out for it uh now uh some of the cast i noticed uh and you mentioned earlier you're talking about reanimated the musical uh so i guess some of the cast there you, <laughs> <laughs> you, one of my favorites being dr hill uh, no i mean Stuart oh, Gordon man, also yeah. it's right so uh um <laughs> I guess it, this was also just some of the crew you, you I guess, liked working with. Is that you kind of use? This, do you just like to reuse the same people? Also, like uh, uh, even behind the, you know, behind the camera people and all that. Um, so, we, I mean, we didn't really have any carryover of like people from behind the scenes with it. But I mean, like Graham, obviously, you know, was just so phenomenal and like robust and and. Uh, reanimated the musical so you know he he was a no-brainer and jesse's like one of my favorite actors in the world and like madly in love with him i think he's just a total genius and i like i can't believe people are not just casting him in absolutely everything i think he's a total genius and uh i adore him but yeah him and um him and skipper and then i i can't think of any i mean I, I used brian gillespie from that at one point in like another couple shorts i did but i think they're the only reanimator people apart from barbara that are in it oh. unless i'm spacing someone um which i probably am and like oh yeah this other person. no I, I think you're right because <laughs> i did look at some of the cast and uh um i just i was like oh he's he's also herbert west that's cool and then i knew yeah. dr hill because actually during your thing you had mentioned that he was in the musical and and uh, then I looked it up at the time back in 2017. But uh <laughs> but yeah. Uh so Aaron, do you wanna you dovetail into one of your questions there? Sure. Um so I loved all the uh practical effects. Um was there any scene with um those effects that you enjoyed shooting the most? Um I'll tell you the most stressful scene was that head explosion. Yeah, that was my favorite scene. <laughs> mine too when, when it actually worked it was great but it, um yeah i mean basically like when we did that we just so i worked i work with this team josh and sierra russell and they're you know they've done like the ritual and they're phenomenal um they're doing the new hellraiser movie they're just total geniuses but um we worked on it for six months in advance to like get this right because we just you know we didn't have like a ton of money and had to we're like this has to just look 
awesome and be like really effective and whatever. So we just did like so much meticulous planning, like talking about like, okay, how's the head going to explode? And I was like, I wanted to like come off like a, like a chunk, like a piece of like a jigsaw puzzle from this guy's face and then just, you know, shoot all this stuff out. And, um, you know, we like went over it. We were like talking about all these different sort of methods. And then uh, basically like the way you have to do these things is you need like a, you essentially need sort of like an explosives technician to actually like pull off that mm. kind of thing. And so we had someone who showed up, uh, we had a guy who, you know, showed up that week and he was like, oh, okay, I know how to do this. Like, we're going to put a charge in here and da, 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 and like, it'll all be great. And I was like, okay, cool. You know? And so, we had the head, we were totally happy, but we had one head. And so the day, I think it was that morning, the guy canceled and he sent this other dude in who like didn't have like any intel on it. Like he just showed up and he basically like had like, like a shotgun with a blank in it. And so like, obviously like we cleared the set, we didn't have anyone around for that. Um, cause why would you, but, uh, you know, we like ran the camera, we were filming, he like shoots it, nothing comes out. It's just like <laughs> totally like blank, like just the, every, all, the integrity of the thing is still there. Nothing happened. And then, uh, I was and it's also like a shotgun blast going off in a backyard like it's incredibly loud i mean granted it's not a real bullet but it's like as loud as one and it was just like i was like oh my god like we're gonna get arrested or something and, i mean like we had permits and stuff but it's like we didn't clear this and so it was really scary and stressful um and it's like i didn't know who this guy is it's just very very nightmarish um <laughs> and so basically like he did it again still nothing just like one bead of like blood came down and i was like oh my god this is just a nightmare i was like this like i was like so looking forward to this <laughs> and finally um someone suggested they were like oh just score like the piece of the head and like have them try that and so we did that and then it like worked perfectly and then we you know paid the guy and he like ran off into the night and I've, I've never seen him since but um it was that i mean that was my favorite like the end result of it yeah. i also really like the intestines getting ripped yeah. out of like justin's that. stomach <laughs> i think that's the bar fun. yeah um <laughs> it's, uh but yeah i mean those are those are kind of the, the my two favorites i think that reminded me of reanimator where it wraps around herbert west at the end right and it, where they filmed it in where he says they filmed it in reverse right and then they oh we we definitely did not do that we just <laughs> them right out of justin so uh yeah <laughs> Uh, also, you had a uh, so uh, I, I pulled a screenshot from the movie because uh, Aaron and I had a question about this. Oh yeah, uh, about the about the painting you had. Back there. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. Uh, so you guys it are, was you guys uh, are picking out some fun stuff. Um, <laughs> so when I saw it, I was it, I, I, I mean I was, I, obviously there's like the pretty much the the third time I'd seen the movie though it'd been years apart. But yeah, I was like I do remember that painting and I. Didn't get to, never got to ask what the who so who is it who did that was that who painted so you're that? never gonna believe the wine this. and paint night result what's that was that like a wine you know the wine and paint night result oh. <laughs> no so it's it's even better that painting was in the house that we shot in like just as oh. is and like we did a bunch of other stuff to that house like it, it was like a it was a cool place but it just like needed a lot of work. But that painting was over the couch. And I was just like, that thing is so fucking creepy. <laughs> and I was like, we have to use that. I was like, I don't know what it is, but Jesus, it like, it like made everyone really uncomfortable. So um, uh, thank you for pointing that out. I think you're the only people that have, have kind of noticed that. So uh, that's, that's a real thrill for me. <laughs> I thought maybe it'd be one of the kids' paintings that the dad say, but then the dad was kind of distant. So, <laughs> right. But then the dad was too that. distant to really care, it seems, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah so exactly. It doesn't seem to fit. It's pretty great. 
Uh, oh, another so, question I had for you. Uh, sorry to cut you off, Nick. Um, no, no, go ahead. So I'm a huge fan of 80s synth music, um, mm -hmm. and that was definitely very prevalent in the movie. Anything that you drew inspiration from uh, in doing the the score? Yeah, there were there were a few. There was like, um, let's see. I mean, it was like a lot of the Fabio Fritzi music, uh, the score to Phantasm, the like, uh, yeah, yeah, Malcolm Seagrove, uh, uh, Fred Myro, like, like the original Phantasm. That was a a big one. Um, John Carpenter, which obviously like everyone's, you know, ripped him off over the past 30 or 40 years but um th those were kind of the big ones and then there were like some really obscure like video game sort of like commodore 64 music pieces we were we were using like there was something from um final fantasy 7 that oh, I, wow. I think we used that was actually this like original temp music for barbara it was like listen to the cries of the planet um which is it's kind of a cool spooky track if people want to use that for temp music for kind of video gamey things and um we had like a we had like a, a like a black sabbath song playing over the like the chase's entrance when he drives up in his car it was like a dio era um mm. black sabbath tune it was so, i mean it was like a lot of like music that i love and am a huge fan of but um it, it was mainly kind of like rooted in that era of like early to like mid 80s kind of right. um synth score so uh with you know some video game trappings here and there very cool cool uh yeah so uh i guess reaching out to one of the f questions we had submitted was uh so obviously that movie's from a few years ago um so what when you I guess when you're making that movie things have changed probably a bit from then to now right when you're actually making things like what are some of the uh, like challenges you face now I guess when you do a movie besides trying to sell it <laughs> well I mean it, that that's a big one but uh, I mean now it's it's weird it's like it's like it's I've sort of like moved into this like um, area where it's like I'm working with kind of like bigger I mean I shouldn't say bigger like that sounds bad but like i'm working with like people that are you know got like this person's in like a huge rock band or something or this person produced like one of my favorite movies when i was a kid or like this person has like a huge movie coming out and so it's like it's like you're you kind of have to um deal with a lot of like other moving parts in order to get something made and like people's egos and like this i mean not that it's like there's a bunch of egotistical assholes or whatever but there is like kind of a real um facet of like you know i've seen people where it's like they kind of don't know how to deal with like executives or producers or these other types and it it's just kind of their death now because um they can be like the most talented person in the world but like if you can't deal with people uh you're gonna have a really hard time getting anything done so you know i mean basically like the stuff i've done um recently it's like we've you know i've got two completed scripts that we're out to cast on right now but it's like there's just so many variables with that and it's like there's name actors there's one project that's got a couple of like pretty big names that you guys would know of that are attached, but um, it's, you just, you have to kind of put these, you have to kind of keep these things together, like Jenga puzzles essentially. And so it's like, they're always kind of like moving around and like, it's, it's just, people have a lot of stuff going on and you got to kind of keep the integrity of whatever you're working on without it going too far down some some road where it doesn't even resemble the thing you you want to make anymore um if that makes sense so I, I i mean i've learned a lot about like you know kind of dealing with like the realities of like selling movies who the people are that are cutting you the checks for them and and that kind of thing and um you basically like have to deal with a lot of hard sort of realities for who's buying the movies and when and what and 
that kind of thing. Otherwise, you just kind of get stuck in this this zone where you're like never really going to move out of. Um, uh, which you know that's not a terrible thing either. But um, I don't know. I mean, it's changed with like working with studios and producers and um, you know just production companies and financiers and actors like that's a, a big one it's like if you you know get like a big actor on something like they're gonna have a lot of opinions and you need to figure them out or they're not going to do your movie and they have a you know a thousand other offers they can go and do and um you, you just you can't be arrogant about that stuff it's like you have to kind of adapt and roll with it so well, that, i figured that's what you meant by egos is uh yeah <laughs> where, where somebody says like hey i know what's gonna sell i figured they'd say i know what's gonna sell and i need you to do this because i know what i'm doing right yeah. So. yeah yeah and i mean it's it's been um i mean it's really interesting too because it's like there's just so many people i know where they you know like my buddies did like the new scream movie and they like went through this period for I mean, I feel like it was like 10 years or something where, you know, they would get like some work here and there. But I, I just remember being like, these guys are like unbelievably talented. Like, I can't believe like people are not like throwing money at them. And, you know, then finally they, you know, got uh, ready or not. And then surprise, surprise, it was a great movie and everyone loved it. And it, it did really well. And, you know, they're doing scream now and they have all these other things lined up and so it's like there there's kind of like a, a thing i wish people would notice a little more with like trajectories it's not so much like like on the fan end of things like because i think generally like people like me and like you guys we have like watched the kind of ebbs and flows of like the people we've admired like where you see like okay sam raimi came out of the gate with evil dead and just killed it and it's amazing and then he did Crime Wave, and it was this like mega yeah. flop, and he yeah. like almost like never made another movie again. And um, then he like got Evil Dead Two in, and then you know got a, a second chance from it. And um, there's just there's a lot of stuff like like that that I think you know film fans are aware of, but like uh, a lot of execs and and those types are mm. not like where they're just like oh well we hate them now because fuck him or whatever, and so. It can kind of like I've seen a lot of that. I'm not. I'm. I sound like really just horrible and cynical, but you know, <laughs> it's the. Uh, it, it's just one of these realities of like what you have to kind of deal with in order to to survive. So, well, like uh, Jason Blum, when Blum when he was on um, Joe Bob's show, and he's saying he's like, well, it's you know Joe Bob was asking about when you make movies, and he's like, well, it's not really that different than like selling groceries he's all you know yeah. they, they see him just as a widget and then the widget needs to make money because that's how they go to bermuda and that's how you put braces on the kids right so the, they were like it has it's a formula we're going to use this formula it makes this much money and that's why i actually personally yeah. never took like remakes uh very personal because i know some accountant probably said hey if we do this we're going to get this output well, and it's going to pay for this <laughs> yeah and I, I i think a lot of it is just like how how's it executed and is there because i mean frankly it's like i think i'm just i'm more against just bad soulless movies being made and it's like i think you know if something works and it's sturdy you can certainly have someone else do their take on it it's like even something like you know like the night of the living dead remake which you know i don't i don't think it's like a high watermark for horror movies but i think it's like a justified film you know and it's like he'd did it differently it's like you know i mean it still feels the same but the top of any one yeah but i mean it's like you know he did his own thing with it and it's like that's the thing i kind of wish more people would do is like rather than try to just like sort of like xerox these beats from like the movie that they like just like put their own personal stamp on it and you know do something that's unique to them because i mean that's what john carpenter did with the thing it's like he loved the original and he was just like, okay, well, I can't compete with that. So I'm going to do something totally different. And um, that's really like where I think you have some opportunity to kind of innovate and do something interesting. But um, I mean, for me, like I like challenges with stuff where it's like, okay, this seems really hard. How do you, 
how do you tackle it and like what's the the way in it's like when there's no challenge with anything then i feel like it's generally not worth doing you know and and speaking of that uh when you mentioned uh tom savini's night living dead uh he actually had put out a book right and he's done in interviews where he said uh you know it wasn't the movie i wanted to make it was the movie i could afford to make and also uh he was getting divorced at the time and he said that and fighting over custody for his daughter so he said that was like the worst time in his life <laughs> and yeah. uh so i guess hopefully you didn't have to go through that but did you have something <laughs> similar did you have something similar where like you you know you had besides the shotgun scene uh where it was like oh i planned to do this but budget happened and i had to do this or you had to adapt um... so much that it changed your vision not i mean it's like I, I will say like the 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 very honest thing is like if if we had you know five million dollars or whatever to to make that that other dimension would look like how the poster does in mm. uh, on the cover like that was like exactly how i wanted it to look the realities of that that was not happening so you know we had to kind of make do with light and fog and just, <laughs> you know kind of get away with like a little more of an atmospheric thing but um uh I, I yeah i mean it's like all of these things it's like you look back at like you know what you'd want to do differently but it, it's so many of the times it's like what doesn't work for me probably works for someone else and i mean we've we all had our sort of experience with you know george lucas going back and like tweaking the you know the original trilogy and doing these like special editions and we were like how could he do this you know and so i mean i think it's ultimately like once it kind of gets out to the public i think um you kind of just have to leave it alone and move on to the next thing no definitely and i, I know with george lucas he'd actually like, like library of congress had asked for a an, like a some some print of it and he was only willing to send them like the specialized version and they said no <laughs> they wanted the despecialized one and he was like no you're not getting it then and uh <laughs> right so now like the whole Dispe star wars despecialized editions like a whole thing people buy at conventions right because they want the original so yeah. yeah definitely once it gets out it's it's stamped and that's what you have to live with into perpetuity and then i guess my point was i guess when you learn for the next movie or whatever what you do, do different so yeah, I, I think you really have to just keep moving forward with things. And it's like you can get into these real sort of I, I just find so many people that get into these like dangerous rabbit holes where they're just like very focused on, you know, like repeating the same thing or whatever. And um, it, 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 that's another long winded tangent I want to go on. But um, yeah. Well, so what, what are you working on? What are you working on now? Um, so there's a few things there. You said you wrote two scripts, right? Where yeah. Well, one, script? one, I'm just attached as a director, but I, I helped develop it. Um, which that actually, I don't want to jinx anything. Seems like that might be the next thing I do. Um, that's, I don't know. God, this, <laughs> this is like really hard to talk around. Um, uh, I'm working on that with the guitarist of a, a very popular band who wrote the script. It's a horror comedy. It's kind of like in the vein of um, like an Evil Dead 2 or something kind of of that ilk. Uh, it, it's sort of like American Werewolf in London and Evil Dead 2. And, um, oh, cool. It's pretty pretty insane. It's like well, it's like one of the only scripts I've I've read in recent years that i got genuinely excited by so um hmm. that's nice and then the other one is uh i, I you want to think... jinx it <laughs> yeah, well i just it's like no i know also just it's like there's just so many so many things like i've i've gotten in in trouble for like <laughs> spilling where i was just like oh i shouldn't have said that and then it, it pisses <laughs> someone off so um well, feel free yep. on the next on whatever you come up with next. Let us know. We'll we'll put yeah. it in the group, and we'll probably do a watch party for it. Oh, thanks. And uh, we did. I did have a final question. Maybe oh, Aaron can ask right. you about this one. Uh, our, <laughs> one, of, one of our favorite photos. Yeah, our favorite yeah, photos. One of mine, what is the yeah. story behind this, this wonderful hot dog pick? Yeah, it was. Uh, I think that was at a uh, Stephanie trepanier's backyard this guy dustin took that photo i i don't know what was happening there but um very seductive I'm 
Thank you. <laughs> I'm very glad it exists. Yeah, no, <laughs> did, you even put, did you even put mustard on that or anything? Nothing. No, just no. Raw I dog. think I just did it for like the photo op. I don't think I actually <laughs> ate that to, you know, be wildly disappointing here. But um, yeah, I was just, you know, I, I was just raw dogging it, I suppose. So. <laughs> Well, we all enjoyed uh, Beyond the Gates. We all enjoyed the movie. We watched it as a group, a uh, Shutter Horror fans group. So we had a cool. Well, thank you. A bunch of people watch it, and we're real thankful for you coming on and answering some of our questions. Yeah, so, I, 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 I wish I had some better answers for you, but uh, no, we got plenty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, hopefully, one of these these two things will get announced pretty soon. But um, yeah, should should be interesting. Uh, that's it. Yeah, do you still go through like the Alamo or anything? I mean, uh, I don't know how you came yeah. across that. I went Alamo. went and saw Ghostbusters there uh, two days ago. So well, I meant like put out, when you put something out, not a not a not watching stuff there, but like if you, when you put out your next project, is it going to be? Oh, through? would I go there? Uh, or no, would, no, no, would like I screen uh, there. What do you mean? Yeah, like like how you did uh, in 2017 when I saw Beyond the Gates. That's oh yeah, like. of course. I mean, oh, I, like yeah, I love that theater. It's like one of my favorites and ever. I mean, I, I I I go there constantly, and it's like a huge honor to have anything screen or, or anything of mine screen there. Or like, I mean, the fact that I'm like not turned away at the door there is uh, I'm very thankful for because yeah, I just I I feel like I'm nowhere near cool enough to be in that place and. Um, I absolutely love it. It's just, it's, it's such a rad environment to see movies in. So, um, no, well, I mean, your movie was, was released by what IFC midnight. They put out a bunch of good stuff. So yeah, like, I mean, you're, it, you're, you're among a lot of greats there. Yeah. Well, it was, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Like they, yeah, they did like uh, autopsy of Dane, of Jane Doe, which I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan of. And, um, uh, you know, the hollow and like, Baba Duke and uh, I mean they've got some fun stuff. Yeah, <laughs> well that's true. Can also, I ask yeah, you I guys it. a question? Oh, absolutely. Do you, who who's your favorite Universal monster? You know, I have to I, for myself. I would have to probably go with. I guess I would have to go with the Wolfman just overall because he didn't really want to be who he was. Mm -hmm. You know, initially, so or, I guess later on he kind of accepted it better once he switched actors and all that but uh <laughs> once we start getting once we start getting into people trying to take their trips to bermuda and accountants saying uh we need to put braces on the kids but uh i you know kind of and then his father had to take him out you know at the end right and he'd, that'd be through somebody you love Tough stuff yeah i mean I, to be honest uh you know i like I'll, they're great for the time and i i I've uh, since uh, Aaron lived in Florida for a long time. Uh, I the one thing I really dislike about the Universal Studios in Florida is they don't have the tram ride because I like in at the Hollywood one you get to do the tram ride and you get to go to that you know right where they, they yeah show, yeah yeah uh, of course they they show some of the spots uh, that one spot I'm trying to remember yeah there's that there. like town square town thing. square yeah um, yeah and so that's kind of one of my favorite parts of there because I'm like man they filmed all these profound movies here. You know, and it's like it's just so cool. You know, with with especially during that time, the formative time and all that. But yeah, yeah. So, what about you, I'm, Aaron? Uh, I mean, I have to probably go the the feminine route and say Bride of Frankenstein. Excellent choice. Excellent. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, good stuff. <laughs> yeah, appreciate you for coming on, and yeah, uh, feel free to contact us. You know, post whatever you want in the group, and we'll. Question. Once, once you're able to break the news on your <laughs> rock and roll, yeah, Evil Dead I, I really wish I, I, I mean, I, I hate like being in these like nebulous sort of periods where it's like you can't see because you're like all I want to do is like just go and make this thing and then talk about it and you know have everyone already seen it and whatever. But um, the you know realities of like film financing and what have you are um, in strong opposition to that so um <laughs> yeah i'm sure they have a uh, formula for it and they're trying to look at the formula. yeah well well you know i'll i'll come back on whenever the the next one is but hopefully it'll be sooner rather than later all right well great we'll keep an eye out thanks for joining us thank Jackson you Stewart, thanks for everybody. having me <laughs> see ya bye